when we left Malaysia for this training, we had very high hope of learning a lot more about ferrocement technology. We have had some experience working with this material back at home. However, we feel that a formal training will definitely boost our confidence and the desire to work harder to popularize ferrocement in our country. On behalf of my colleagues from Malaysia, I would like to take this opportunity to convey our sincere and deepest thanks to IFIC, AIT, and all individuals who had made this training a success. The International Ferrocement Information Center at the Asian Institute of Technology has been in the forefront of promoting the use of ferrocement, particularly in the developing countries. Ferrocement, as I said, is not a traditional subject. So what we did was uh, to introduce ferrocement in their curriculum. And if it, as these specialized information center is known, wants to increase and popularize the use of ferrocement just so its wide applications can make life better for the billions of people in the developing countries. Ferrocement is a highly versatile form of reinforced concrete made of wire mess, sand, cement, and water. The technology's modest cost, its intensive use of cheap manual labor, and the wide availability of basic raw materials make it an ideal tool in development programs. Ferrocement training programs conducted by EFIC bring people from different countries and backgrounds together. Most of the tools used in ferrocement construction are intended for conventional concrete work and are readily available in the market. These include tape meters, wire cutters, twisters, and a range of innovative tools. Skeletal steel used to construct a ferrocement structure is measured and cut according to requirements. Using innovative tools, the skeletal steel is bent to desired shape. Being fabricated here is a ferrocement porflas latrine. The tie wires, which are galvanized wires or surplus wire meshes, are cut. They are used to tie the reinforcement steel at the nodes. Tightness is ensured by twisting the wires. The spacing between the skeletal steel is measured. The shape of the structure is fabricated. Accurate measurement is necessary to ensure efficient performance. The skeletal steel is covered with one layer of hexagonal wire mess. The wire mess is cut so it can be bent as necessary. It is firmly put in place. A tight fit is an important consideration. A second layer of wire mess is placed on top of the first. To ensure proper profile and compactness of reinforcements, the mess layers are tied vertically and horizontally according to the specified spacing requirements. They are overlapped at all mess joints to provide continuity. Additional reinforcement is provided by cutting the wire mess and firmly placing it on the interior of the structure. The sun-cement ratio by weight of mortar is two parts of sun for every one part of cement. The corresponding recommended ratio for water and cement is 0.45. Water is added gradually into the mixture until the desired consistency is obtained. The mortar is mixed in batches. Each batch is plastered within an hour after mixing. Batching reduces the wastage of mortar as a result of partial setting. Plaster is applied in the wire mesh frame of a ferrocement latrine. The layers of mesh are staggered to allow more uniform distribution of reinforcement and to provide a superior bond for the mortar while plastering. A 
A curing period of up to 28 days is recommended, as it is during this period that a cement mortar attains most of its strength. This cured ferro cement porphyllus latrine is now ready for testing and subsequent use. Ferro cement can be fabricated into almost any shape. Under construction here is a ferro cement storage tank. What is held inside the tank as plaster is applied from the outside. The structure is kept moist throughout the curing period. In the construction of boats and canoes, ferro cement is used as a suitable substitute for timber. Ferro cement canoes cost much less than wooden canoes. They are seamless and therefore less susceptible to leaks. Ferro cement canoes do not rot nor corrode. They are also resistant to fire. The developing countries are fast recognizing the benefits of ferro cement. Many traditional methods of collecting and storing water present health problems. A suitable alternative to unsatisfactory water collection and storage is the use of ferro cement water tanks. The growing scarcity of timber and traditional building materials has encouraged the use of ferro cement in constructing comfortable and strong houses, thus helping to alleviate the region's housing shortage. Inadequate sanitation facilities is a chronic problem in rural areas. Sanitation programs are now promoting the use of ferro cement latrines to replace poor sanitation facilities. In many Asian countries, water transport through canal networks and river systems is popularly used for commercial and domestic purposes in both rural and urban areas. Ferro cement as a boat building material was first introduced in the 1940s. Since the mid-1960s, ferro cement boats have been mass-produced in a number of countries. The transfer of ferro cement technology to the rural areas is central to EFIC's objectives. Training in ferro cement construction is one of six major services provided by EFI. Trainees come from various developing countries. The majority have had several years of working experience in developing programs carried out by governments and NGOs. EFIC's training programs can be tailored to meet the needs of specific groups and individuals. Trainees are exposed to various types of ferro cement construction carried out in the region. Some that have been the subject of discussions and actual demonstrations are the remodeling of ferro cement boats, the coracle, a country cough in India, the construction of an oil barge, the benefits of low cost housing. the popularity of ferro cement grain storage, the uses of biogas holders, a complete ferro cement water system, and various housing projects in Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Papua New Guinea. Another service by EFIC is the production and dissemination of ferro cement publications. The quarterly journal of ferro cement contains findings of latest research as well as practical ferro cement applications. Do-it-yourself manuals teach non-technical people how to construct ferro cement storage bins, water tanks, biogas holders, biogas digesters, canoes, roofing elements, latrines, and canal lining. FOCUS is a general information brochure on ferro cement. It is published in 14 Asian languages as well as in English. Translations are available in Swahili, Portuguese, Spanish, and French. The slide presentation series shows the development and applications of ferro cement technology. Each set contains 30 slides. The ferro cement information network for Asia and Africa consists of five universities, one each from Malaysia, the Philippines, India, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia. Each network node serves as a repository of documents and a redistribution point and also conducts training.
Ifik regularly reviews over 100 journals, magazines, newsletters, digests, and bulletins, in addition to numerous monographs, reports, conference proceedings, theses, and unpublished references. References on ferrocement and related materials are identified and abstracted. These are indexed and entered into EFIX bibliographic databases. Each record contains primary information such as author, title, abstract, and keywords, and secondary information such as availability, date, language, and type of publication. UNESCO's CDS ISIS, the Computerized Documentation Service and Integrated Set of Information Systems, is used in EFIC databases. These databases are updated at a rate of 300 records per year. EFIC also supports the development of computer software by faculty and students at AIT. A recently completed software on the design of ferrocement tanks is written in basic language and follows the linear elastic theory of thin shells. Inquiry service is another major activity. IFIC responds through referrals to its over 140 consultants in 39 countries or by providing direct professional advice. IFIC has 52 reference centers in 24 developing countries. Through training programs, seminars, study tours, conferences, and symposia, engineers, architects, and extension workers learn about ferrocement technology. Since 1980, IFIC has been promoting the inclusion of ferrocement as a topic in appropriate engineering and architecture courses. Ferrocement technology is now being taught in 132 universities in 49 countries. IFIC's curriculum campaign has been a major contributing factor to this development. During the past two to three decades, ferrocement technology has gained tremendous momentum in the developing countries. The reason is clear. Ferrocement applications are of great significance to third world communities. Here at the Ferrocement Park of the International Ferrocement Information Center at AIT, visitors from different countries are introduced to ferrocement. Many of them are seeing the benefits of ferrocement for the first time they will return to their countries with new information about a suitable construction material. The International Ferrocement Information Center seeks to bring ferrocement technology to the countries that need it most and to provide ferrocement information to the right person at the right time.